Miss Aurelia blew my load back there. Need some help. Just take us where we need to go and we won't mutilate your living body. Nope, that's a one. Okay, you're done. And can I just choke him to death? Oh, we're in zero grav right now? Let's go find some more information by the way of violence. We're gonna overload everything. Why? That is two natural ones in a row. Oh my. Oh, that could have gotten worse. Hello, everyone, and welcome to DN Digital's Starships and Scoundrels campaign. My name is Dave, and I'll be your game master. We're using the Star Wars 5e system to tell the story of a crew of a smuggling freighter known as the Mayday set about a year after the fall of the Jedi Order. Each session is going to be going live on Wednesdays around 3 p.m. Pacific time, so make sure to subscribe, click that bell, do all those YouTube things, and tune back in next week for more action. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Last time on Starships and Scoundrels, the time for planning had ended and the time for battle had come. Harry gave a rousing speech to those who remained from his gang as the crew prepared to attack Fabla's base. R5 called in his droid allies and sent them to their positions. Dread and Sictor made it to the central power station and shut down all but the life support just as the rest of the crew began their attack. Fabla's defenses were quickly overwhelmed by the DIYB gang. Within the minute, the crew of the Mayday had breached the base's exterior and stood before the darkened halls within. And with that, we're going to go ahead and return to the crew of the Mayday as the battlefield falls silent around you. And it's still quite dark in this entire area, in this hallway. Um, and the uh, light, but the light support's still on, so you still have air. Um, you're not suffocating or anything. Um, but yeah, the door to Fabla's base is open in front of you, and uh, there don't seem to be any lights on inside at the moment either. And uh, for those of you with dark vision, you don't see anything in the immediate area past the main door. What do you guys want to do? Anybody who got us some spare power sets? Miss Aurelia blew my load back there. Need some help? I've got about. Yeah, I can spare you about two. You, does that work? Better than nothing. I uh, I do have dark vision mm -hmm. as a hand key, but ten power cells. Ooh. I look into the door. Okay, well if you had that many, right. then okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, Umbrin, you walk over towards uh, the door and you look inside. It's a fairly emptied out hallway. It looks like there's a decent amount of stuff that was kind of floating in proper positions, but it has all been kind of dislodged and there's a lot of just like random, like things that were hanging on walls, stuff, kind of debris floating around um, inside, but you don't see any signs of activity at the moment. The initial entryway is like honored members of people who have, you know, done the best of the crimes um that the organization has done and it's oh. like a nice like they're all like posed very fancily like kind of looking off in the distance <laughs> it's the hall of employees got it <laughs> yeah all right uh all right yeah this you, is, you uh, know that the whole that the base takes up like an entire sector's worth um so you, if this were to be a straight path through you would know it would probably fade off beyond what you could see um question dave do i still have this prisoner around my hand Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yes, you do. No longer being choked out quite as badly as uh, at the very end, but um, yes, you still very much have uh, you have them. I'm just going to look at him and say, lead the way. Uh, oh, okay. Where, where'd you, where you want to go? Uh, Pablo himself, or does he have a vault around here? Probably inside of his, um, you know, inside of his office would be where... He would keep that kind of stuff. Would he be in his office? I, I kind of doubt it. He probably was there before you guys started attacking, but then it's not exactly the most secure room, so he probably would have gone somewhere a little safer. All right, take us to his office then. Like a panic room then. I mean, probably something like that. I, I don't really get looped in on the, that sort of thing, but yeah, okay, I'll take... So at the office, uh, we just want to go down the hallway. Um, and then if you let him, he'll start um, floating in first, uh, leading you through. Um, I'm going so, to tell the army behind me. Look at it me. this way. The more you know, the longer you get to live. 
I mean, that just sounds like he's gonna have to make stuff up to live longer. Which I don't blame him, but, you know, just take us where we need to go and we won't mutilate your living body. I, I, I don't know why you're all talking to me this way. I already am trying to do the thing you're asking. Um, uh, so, so it's 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 this this way, uh, um, and very nervously and clearly panicked, um, he starts leading you in uh, to the base. The hallway starts to kind of take some corners and turns around as you go. Um, you see a few random like little small rooms off to the side, um, going out in different directions uh, until you get to first. You notice a few bigger ones um, that actually have uh, proper labels on them. Um, so one of them uh, says on the side that you know is going towards the outside of the ring, um, just says uh, storage above it, um, above, well, kind of around it because it's like a round door. Um, and then a little bit further down on the inside of the ring, it says there's one that says barracks. Eventually, after like a minute or two, um, you get towards what is uh, clearly um, kind of the middle section of the base. Uh, and at this point, um, R5 in particular, actually, over the comms, you uh, hear the voice of 999 um, coming in. This status report requested. Please send update. Inside Fiveless Compound, currently in the hallway, headed towards office. We'll update as needed. Acknowledged. Updates no longer necessary. Our forces have been reduced too greatly to remain effective. We must retreat. Understood. Your work has been appreciated. Acknowledged. And uh, that's what you get in return um, for that particular uh, bit of communication right there. Um, okay, droids got beat to hell. They're pulling out. That's not good. All right. <sighs> And also, uh, just around that same time, um, you notice that actually all of the lights begin to come back on, but you still have not actually seen anybody um, as you proceeded through, and you don't at this point either. And uh, even from far away, you do hear back in the distance behind um, where you the entire group entered um, with your full squad of uh, like kind of gangster soldiers. Um, you hear the sound of the doors closing um, that you came in through. Um, this guard is going to keep leading you um, a little bit further in. Um, he'll kind of, it's the, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's the Fabla's um, office is just right up here, um, pretty close by. Eventually he brings you up to this one door. It's by far the most elaborately decorated. It's got this very nice kind of thin gold trim um, around the outsides of the frame. It has like these kind of very nice swirly patterns all through the um, door itself. Uh, it doesn't even have a name on it, but you know just instantly by looking at it, this is the door of whoever is in charge. He'll just kind of gesture, he's like, okay, um, I mean, I know I don't have clearance to open the door, but there, there's the door. Where are the, where are the control rooms? Would I be able to use a security spike on this door? Or a security uh, you, kit? You do see a little panel off to the left side. Um, of the door and uh, you would figure that you could use um, some kind of security kit on it. Would that be an intelligence check? Uh, yes, it's intelligence. Yes. That is a 15 total. All right, a 15. Um, you, the door does not seem to budge at all um, from that, but you actually do feel a small shock um, kind of shoot back in um, through your tools and into your body. Um, not enough to do any damage, but you get a sense that this thing has been rigged a little bit where if you don't approach it the right way, you'll probably get properly hurt. Yeah, this guy's got some serious security. Uh, yeah, he's wired the locks. I'm a, I'm a uh, calm uh, draw. What's wrong with the power? Who? Uh, there's lights on. What's going on? Talk to me. I don't know who you're talking to. Make me hurt you when I get. All right, W Dread here. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's entirely likely that the uh, backup power has been activated. I can try to pinpoint it, but I can't promise anything. He just slowly lowers his fingers from his 
uh, <laughs> Aural implant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, all right, can I try to, uh, can I try to do some kind of trace to see if the systems are connected in a way yeah, that I could, that. um, yeah. Yeah, that would be Would this uh, be a slicer's a kit or technology? Uh, actually, I would say this one is just technology as you're trying to just kind of ascertain your way around through. You're not actually trying to slice into anything. 23. All right, 23. Um, yeah, you figure that there technically actually is a way that you could uh, manipulate um, the power a bit. You definitely couldn't do a full shutdown like you could before. Um, but some of the systems are connected enough that you could try to manipulate small things like locks and um, things like that. All right. But uh, also, can I give, act me a D oh. give me a d20 roll first before you do that. Okay. Can do on that good buddy. 11. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, sorry, carry on with what you were saying. Can I ask, like, do do I see the security system when I'm seeing systems that are connected to what I'm currently controlling? Uh, it's a little more rudimentary than straight up being like, oh, this is the security system. But you're able to tell okay. that basically all of the power systems inside are directly connected to um, the backup power, which does have at least a slight connection. So it's kind of like you're having to take a real long way around and a lot of side paths. Um, but you know that you could get to some uh, security systems. It would just probably take Okay. A All right. I guess um, I'm going to try to effectively hack the door to disable uh, any <clears throat> any kind of security that's on it right now. Okay. Sure. Um, first, before you do that, give me another d20 roll, please. Okay. 15. So, uh, yeah, you start, go ahead, and you're poking around. Um, give me a, another technology check, please, um, to see if you can kind of start properly worming your way through, um, getting a little closer. Uh, would that be technology or slicer's kit? Oh, sorry, yeah. Go for a slicer's kit on this one. Normal roll, 21. You feel that you probably are, like, about... You get about a third of the way through, um, and then... Strangely, you see a series of uh, words pop up on the screen as you're trying to um, kind of manipulate w your way through. And you see a message just that comes through and just says, ha ha ha, nice try. All right. Damn it. He didn't Damn it. say the magic word. Uh -huh. uh uh uh, you didn't say the magic word. Well, I don't think this is a problem. Because we got two guys with universal keys. Alo, can't you poke this door with your, you're like, ah, uh, sword yeah. thingy? I, I could try, certainly. Dave, uh, if I were to just give a quick examination of the door, how thick do I think it is? Uh, heads up, non-zero, non-zero chance you get electrocuted from this. Just throwing that out there. You are standing outside a completely sealed door and have not seen what the wall thickness is like. Um, so I'd say mm -hmm. from this angle, you can't really tell um, how thick the door would be. Uh, but you could try to see like what material it's made out of and get a sense of how hard it would be to cut through. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's door, not like... so it's not going to be like there's a limit to how thick best... the door can still be and be functional. Um, but it's not it's not best guy or anything. Uh, give me an investigation check. OK, investigate, the hose. investigate them hose. Doors made of vibranium. 16. Nice. Uh, you can tell that the door is made out of fairly standard, like, blast shield door material. Um, so okay. heavy duty, uh, most standard things would not be able to cut through it. Uh, you know a lightsaber mm -hmm. could, but it would um, it would not be fast. It would take you probably a minute um, or two to get right. to properly uh, it enough. All right. All right. Uh, I could try. It's not going to be fast, though. He'll probably, he's going to know we're coming. I mean, he probably already knows we're coming, so. What was that part about electrocution? Can you say that again? Yeah, lock. At least the locks are rigged with some kind of security system that uh, zaps you if you get the combination wrong. Not sure if that applies to the rest of the door as well, but the wiring might be there. Uh, Alo, give me an intelligence check, please. Gladly. 
Okay. These are all things I'm wonderful at. Uh, that is a 15. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, from your experience of handling and being trained in uh, lightsaber usage, um, mm -hmm. you would know that the that electricity doesn't really travel up the light that is the actual portion of the lightsaber very easily. So the chances you of getting electrocuted would be pretty minimal. Um, all right. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pull a Qui Gon Jinn from Episode One and just sort of stick it in, um, and see if I can possibly tell if it goes all the way through or not. Yeah, it takes a second. Um, it's not like a super fast, like you know, hot knife through butter situation, but you're right, able to kind of get right. through, and you can sense that before you get to the end of your blade, that um, you have hit uh, you've hit the end of the resistance into the room. Um, as there's just Perfect. multiple right. metal surrounding the blade itself. All right, then I'm just going to slowly just start to try to carve a, a doorway. Sure. Uh, just give me a strength <laughs> check um, to see kind of how quickly um, you'll be able to carve out sure. a functional doorway to at least be able to open it. 22. Woo! Woo! Yeah, it takes Woo! you a matter of like a couple of minutes. Um, but while you're doing that, what is everybody else doing? doing i guess first dread what are you doing over on your side and then we'll get to the rest of the crew i'm gonna turn to sector and i'm gonna say i have an idea but i need you <clears throat> to help me out i need faster fingers than i got all right i'll uh i'll, I'll see what i can do what do you uh what, what do you have in mind we're gonna overload everything that send as much say. data as possible to every system i'm gonna see if we can no just in their sector Okay. Uh, what? What's the? We're gonna idea? see if we can blow out every electronic they got over there. We can try. I wouldn't count on anything too significant happening. They probably have at least some amount of uh, some amount of security set up to make sure there is a limited amount of inf information that can be sent. But uh, I mean, every dam's got to break eventually if enough pressure is put behind it, right? Exactly. So we just keep applying pressure faster than they can leak it out or whatever. Let's, yeah, Sictor can just kind of give you advantage on the check. Um, yeah, just go ahead and give me a okay. slicer's kit check while you start kind of doing that. Add Before I do that, can I try to use a technology check to like try to find pressure points, basically systems that are more likely prone to failure? Sure, give me a technology check. Uh, and will this also be an advantage or is this a normal roll? Uh, I'd say Sictor's kind of prepping on his end, so this one's just a normal roll. 26. Very nice. Uh, yeah, you're able to kind of dig through. You find probably where the weak points are. Uh, give me a d20 roll, please. Eight. All right. So yeah, you do, um, once again, you get a message that pops up after you find it. And it this time it just says, oh, I don't like it when intruders start trying to play with my toys. I know where you are. I recommend that you stop before you get hurt. Can I run a trace on that message? Sure. Go and give me a... Uh, I'd say this one falls for a slicer's kit. Go ahead and just give me that. All right. 22. Yeah, it's coming from within Fabla's base. Um, you're able to tell at this point that it's not just a like a computer program um, that's reacting in security mode. There is a active user on the other end trying to counter whatever you're doing. Boy, dread the base, dread the base. <laughs> yeah. Is somebody interfering right, is one of with my hacking? The base? You were all base, whatever. Um, <clears throat> is somebody interfering with my hacking? I need you guys to find him. He's somewhere in the base. All right, R5, try to open the control room doors. Uh, I'm Bryn, I guess you and Kibo can maybe go check out the control rooms, see if you can find anything. Understood, right, boss. By the way, when, right. when exactly does the big bomb go boom? When does that happen? When uh, I feel more threatened, and I'm not feeling threatened at all. I don't think that big bomb's going to boom anytime soon, then. All right, let's go find this control room. Oh, uh, also, before, I well, after they can uh, just uh, look at the one guy and say, okay, you're done. And can I just choke him to death? <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah, no, go ahead and give uh... me a. Uh... Give me a, um, do you have Metal. an unarmed attack benefit or is it just, uh, is it just, just gonna be a strength roll? Uh, oh, I'm surprised. Honestly, surprised <laughs> it took that long. I think it's just gonna be a strength roll. 
Ooh, I'm not watching this. You know what? Let me just use my phone. Okay. <laughs> Give me an attack. Oh yeah, that's the that's the reasonable option. Twenty. He, he it's does. the merciful choice. Oh, holy crap! I actually rolled for it to see if he could wriggle free just long enough to. He's not going to get far, but he's able to barely kind of wriggle out of your grip as you're trying to go and chop him with your vibro axe. Um, and he starts trying to run away. Most of your crew is back towards the way you came, so he knows at least what direction your your group is not at the moment. And starts heading towards effectively sector 251. But if you want to chase him, you could easily catch him. Oh, I'm going to chase him. You're able to catch him very quickly. Um, and at this point, unless there's anything else you want to do, you're able to just full on bury that vibro axe um, and just yeah finish him at that point as he's trying to run. I mean, basically. Yeah, that's what happens right there. Um, so is everybody else leaving Alo at the door um, kind of by himself to cut his way through? Uh, what What's everybody doing? Do we know? Do we know where the control room is? You just said go to the control room. Clark just turns and looks at the guy that you just chopped. Well, this is going about as well as expected. I'm going to go try to pick the lock. Uh, I hope I get zapped. I'm going to turn to Sictor and say, change in plans, or I need, uh, we might have some resistance coming up. I need you to get that big beam laser of yours ready, and uh, I'm going to do the... I'll focus on the slicing. Okay, that is a 15 on the security kit using the spike. Okay, 15 on security kit. Uh, before we get to that, um, Paul, what were you saying about a big laser for Sictor? <laughs> oh, I was saying get that big beam cannon ready. Oh, yeah, just his own, um, his own, his, his, uh, Masonic cannon that, um, he has, do you mean? Or? Indeed. Okay, cool. Just making sure. He just kind of gives you a nod. He's like, okay, uh, I can't really help you with trying to slice in and do that as well, but, um, whatever you think. That's fine. I'd rather have our backs covered than get to the front faster. All right. You got this. And I would looking like around. to try... Oh, go ahead. Uh, yes. He starts just kind of looking around, scanning around. Before you do anything, let's resolve the second attempt at the security kit. Um, so this time, uh, you see that the um, there's a little red light that blinks as soon as you do that. Um, at this point, it's really just kind of you and Alo, like particularly close to the door. Um, and you notice that this gas starts kind of shooting out of these tiny little holes in the wall towards the both of you. I'm gonna need both of you to give me a con save, please. Bullocks. And no, it's not poison. Uh, Does this affect beings that don't require oxygen to breathe? Uh, it is not an issue of inhaling. Um, it's okay. more, I'm guessing, corrosive. Uh, wait, uh, Dave, I don't know if this is going to help me or not. Let me know. Uh, not poison. Not poison. Okay. You have two limits. <laughs> oh, yeah. It must be a bitch of a time trying to get drunk. Dirty 20. Well, let's... Uh, dirty, so, dirty 20. Okay, so you both succeed, so you just take partial damage on this one. Um, so you're both going to take... Seven down to three um, acid damage as this mist just kind of begins to coat and like corrode at your skin and like and onto your actual just metal bodies. Um, and you just take a little bit of take, a, take those three points of acid damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Now cool. gonna have to get that shit. Right. Mm, repaint. It's all right. And the door does not open, but Alo, you can continue cutting it. Um, yep. So, just last thing before um, anybody takes off to go towards the control room, wherever that may be, um, I guess, do you guys have a plan or do you have a direction for that? Or are you just going to. I'm not really sure on your own as far as. A control room. As far as, as far as theater of the mind. So, what options do we have as far as directions to go? Because, as far the way and probably I did not hear everything, is that we came up upon this hallway, turned, and then there was the office. 
Yeah, were there other hallways? Effectively, you've been in one long main hallway that has kind of weaved back and forth. It hasn't been a consistent like straight line, but it still has effectively uh-huh. just been one hallway. There have been a few doors leading off into like little side rooms. Uh, nothing that seemed to indicate that it was a control room of any kind. All right, uh, Harry, you're staying here to protect uh, uh, Alo. Is that? Yes. Piano, you're with me. Clark, you're with me. Who else we got? Where the hell is Roos? All right. Well, Kiba, Piana, Clark. Let's go find. Let's go find some more information by the way of violence. All right. So the four of you are splitting off. Are you going back the way you came, or are you going uh, further down the hallway in the direction that you did not come from? Oh, okay. So the hallway that. Okay, so I was under the impression that it dead ended at the gold door, so it does not. So it keeps going. Correct. The uh, gold door is just okay. off on the inner side of the ring itself, um, not the actual. Uh, the hallway continues yeah. past it. The other, the other five doors seem to be inconsequential. Uh, Harry, may I in- inquire as to what all of these uh, extra people are doing during this? Well, right now they. You see them all kind of just twiddling their thumbs, like, waiting for to be told to do something. <laughs> I mean, I was just gonna have them keeping an eye out, basically. Keep an eye on, on our rears? That's not bad, but there's... How many of them are 38. there? 38? I mean, we could just flood these rooms with people. Just saying. Alright, as I say that. You're the boss, you let them know what you're doing, but now we got 38 bodies that are watching our oh. rear. They, they, they got they got other the, the other potential uses just saying all right uh, uh let's go find some. harry will point at say let's go find all right you guys uh 15 of them follow follow on bring whatever he says i say same thing you, you got it boss you got it uh and so hat the uh squad will basically split in half yep yeah. um just, you know, they're effectively, uh, the squad as a whole is at like half their total health in each group then, and uh, they're going to be half as effective in terms of any damage output, but that's how that works. So, yep. Harry, you're staying behind back here. Alo, you're getting real close to finishing to cut that door. Uh, let's just jump over to what um, Dread is doing right now, just to get that last little check before we, um, before the door itself finishes being cut open. Plan continues as, uh, originally conceived just i'm gonna be the one at the uh, at the wheel instead of sector all right so trying to overwhelm the system with too much stuff um okay so go yeah. ahead and give me a uh slicers kit actually give me a d20 roll first then we'll do the slicers kit uh, i don't know if i want to roll high or low but here we go it's a five <clears throat> okay that's there pretty high Give me a, uh, give me your slicers kit check. 22. All right, you get about to kind of that same stopping point you got to before, and this time instead you sense that there is an electrical current coming back up through the system towards you. Uh, give me a dex save, please. There's that. Three. Ooh. It's yep. fine. So that'll be... It is what it is. It doesn't sound fine. So that will be six points of uh, lightning damage that comes shocking back up through the system towards you. Um, and you see that- Hey, reduce. Yeah, reduce it. Um, and then you see the characters on the system, instead of a typed words at this point, they now just form into just a nasty little like curl it on the side, like Grinch grin. Um, just kind of looking back at you from the screen. Can I try to send it back? Yeah, you can go ahead and try. Give me a uh, slice right. skip check. No. Ah, six. Oh no. You know what? I'm gonna use wait, 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 pay point. I'm gonna okay. use a pay point, please. Okay. <sighs> to reroll. Because I had two. <laughs> I want this to happen. Right. Twenty-three. Yes, on a twenty-three you are able to um you can sense that it's going back through. I'll go ahead and have an all deck save. Go ahead and roll me a d6, uh, please. Comes another natural two, six. Nice, Hell very yeah. nice. So that happens. Epic hacker battle going on. <laughs> you can battle. 
Slicer bell. Slicer, please. Uh, so you can definitely sense that the current goes back a lot stronger than what came through to you. Uh, but the nature okay. of it is that you don't actually know what happened on the other side beyond that. So, um... It's fine. Hacker That's fight. Fine. Hacker <laughs> fight. Hacker Slice fight. Slice or fight. <laughs> so, Alo, finally back over there. You're able to finish cutting through uh, the door. Um, and it falls in. At this point, it's just half of the squad left in the area. R5, Alo, and uh, Harry. And the door opens up into a very kind of... Um, uh, almost romantically lit space. Um, it's kind of these like dim low lights, like kind of like little alcoves um, just in the corners uh, floating around um, and that you can see further into. Um, and also just from outside, because it's kind of limited field of view, you do see a window pointing out on the far side. Um, and uh, you see that there are kind of t- three ish like kind of bluish light sources outside your field of view to either side two on one side mm. uh, one on the other and give me a perception check really quickly um i guess i'll three of you uh if you want oh that's still a 15. 15 is not bad oh it was so close i got a nine. Out of a nine very nice all right, so um, Harry, you don't notice it, but um, R5 and Alo, you do see um, just kind of floating above, not floating, kind of right above the et- bottom edge of the window, uh, you see a tiny little red light blinking um, on the outside. Can I investigate the red light, knowing that last time I saw one of those, I got sprayed with acid? Uh, it's a different red light. Uh, you're sure of that. To investigate any further, you'd have to get close to it. It's way up the okay. far side of the rooms, probably like twenty feet by twenty feet. Um, so it's a it's at least twenty feet away from you um, at the moment. All right, I'll uh, yeah, I'll get closer to it and try to investigate. Quickly, you notice what the source of those blue lights are, and you see. Um, well, the only people, the only one of these people that you've actually met before is uh, Ari, um, but it's three people all suspended with their hands um, and arms stretched out kind of into an X shape, um, floating in this blue kind of force suspension um, field, kind of like uh, Obi-Wan in Attack of the Clones um, when he has that dialogue with Count Dooku. Um, mm-hmm. And they all look oh. in very bad shape. Um, one of them has just this luscious long hair and is missing a hand on one side, um, but still has kind of these extra shackles um, holding him back, and one is a woman that you haven't seen. Shorty, can we come in? Uh, sure. I'll go right in. All right. Grizzly sight, right. but I, um, I, I, doesn't seem like I go in after Harry. Traps. Uh, even with the reduced amount of people in the squad that are there, um, you know it would be pretty tight quarters to try to get anybody else in. How many troops do we have with us right now? 23. Uh, so 15? you have 38, so you've got 23. 19 with you. Oh, did you send? Oh, sorry, how many did you send? Um, 15. With this group of three. Oh, you sent, right, sorry, you sent 15 with uh, sent fifteen with Umbrin and Kiva, yes. and so you've got 23 with you. Yes, sorry. There's a very fine desk um, in the center of the room, um, and like kind of various like little trophies like mounted in these um, nice little alcoves o- along the wall. Harry, as you come in, um, you do recognize one Ari Blen. Um, you notice uh, Kurther is the one missing a hand, um, and something finally starts to jog your memory, and you remember Ari telling you about his wife, and you figure that's her um, also strung up inside of the office. Okay. You know these people, boss. Those two are my generals. That's all his wife. Guess he, guess he had her here. Uh, I'm gonna start looking for a panel or, or any way of uh, shutting off the force fields. You figure there's probably something over in the like the desk that's in the middle. It looks like more of just kind of like a person of power sits behind the desk, but you figure there's some controls in there. Um, give me an investigation check. And while he's doing that, is there any way I'd be able to look around for? It was like a blaster pistol we were supposed to be looking for in here. Uh, we will get to that in a second. Um, a three, it's a, it's a desk. It, it's a desk. 
you see there is a screen of some kind, but it just looks like a normal data pad as far as you can tell. Uh, right. Not really my thing. Uh, Shorty, you want to come and look at this? Say so, R5, do you want to go look me? at the desk? <laughs> mm -hmm. I've got a designation, but okay, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll have a look. Okay, so you want to go to the desk first before looking for um, specifically the gun? Uh, just a... Uh, oh, uh, yeah. So go ahead and give me an investigation check at the desk. Alright. Oh, jeez. Uh, natural one. How many fate points do we have left? Alright, let's hope the 18's doing better than we have. We have seven, I believe. I, I'm sorry, I'm using a fate. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I used a fate You're using a what now? <laughs> and... Are you using a what now? Jack. What are you using? <laughs> Jack. That's a one in four hundred chance. Oh, what is going on? <laughs> Why? That is two natural ones in a oh, row. Oh my! Uh, so oh. R five starts floating across um, at Alo, calling him Shorty. And for a second, just... one of your little thrusters kind of just starts to short out, and you just kind of start spinning, and you lose kind of sense of direction, and you just go headlong into the desk, and just kind of bonk off, and you're just like. You kind of get dazed. You, you shake it off, but you're like, I, I have no idea. Is, is this a desk? What is this thing? I don't know. What is going on? Nobody saw that, right? Saw so what? Little roller. What are you doing? Get to the data pen. <sighs> Am I able to try again, or is something else? Not an investigate. Not an investigation check. No. Yeah. You you have no uh, idea what the deal is with this desk. It is. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to shut this off. All right, go look for the blaster pistol. I'll try to find somewhere to take take them out of this force field. Uh, I'm going to assist Terry. I'm going to see if I can maybe try to deduce some way of shutting off this contraption. Sure. Um, or, or breaking it without hurting them. Okay, so uh, both of you um, go ahead and give me an investigation check, please. I just start kind of looking around. I got a four. So, uh, Harry, you're not able to, you're kind of just like, you're thrown off a little bit. You're just seeing your, you're seeing your generals um, just in probably the worst shape other than Salvin that you've seen any of them in, just because he was, you know, very severely burnt. Alo, you do notice um, kind of coming off of each of where their hands are is a very faint blue light that kind of tapers away off into little corners. You figure that there's some kind of mechanism on the other side of that wall that's actually what's generating the force field holding them in position. Which way, uh, the window that I saw, which direction is it facing? Uh, it's facing towards the middle of the space station. So you can actually see the giant power center that's in the middle of the ring um, where you know that Dread currently oh, wow. is. Okay, then I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my attention back to the wall that uh, I'm trying to get on the other side of. I'm gonna I'm just gonna sort of uh, knock on it and see if I can hear any hollow uh, hollow sounds. Yeah, it sounds pretty hollow. Of... It sounds pretty hollow around, not right where the actual um, little faint blue light is coming out from, but uh, yep. in the area around it, you kind of can hear some hollow spaces. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I did to the door, and I'm gonna sort of carve a hole yep. through it again. So yeah, this one takes a lot less time. Um, just go ahead and give me a dexterity check, or a sleight of hand if you have it, um, but dexterity. Uh, oh, let me see if I have, it's an 11. Yeah, 11's enough. Um, you're able to get in there pretty easily, and it's pretty quick. You're able to kind of like do a quick cutout and get both of, uh, get everything kind of freed, and you see the mm -hmm. force field around him just shut down, um, and it's uh, zero gravity, so he just kind of floats. Um, he still is unconscious at this point. Oh, we're in zero grav right now? Oh, yeah. The whole station yep. is, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> the whole space Silky. station. That changes, changes the whole theater. Oh, all right. that explains all those weird <laughs> little comments you kept making about people floating around. I have to stand more now. <laughs> Thought I was saying things. All right. Um, yeah, I guess once they're uh, all three of them are down. Um, yeah, sure. you know what to do at this uh, point, so it just takes you a little while to kind of go through all yeah. of them. Uh, Harry, yeah. what are you doing as Alo starts cutting him loose? Uh, I'm gonna bring down. If there's a way to uh, just like kind of grab all three, it's not super easy to grab all three of them. All right, I guess. Um, I mean, it is on your own. Just more of a function of like they're three adults beings. Um, 
but you can start kind of moving them around very easily. It's, I mean, it's zero gravity. There's no Yeah, I'll just move them towards. Effort. You can just kind of take their arm and just kind of guide them around to wherever you want them to yeah. be. Yeah. Uh, so I'll do, I'm going to grab them by the arm and um, call in a couple of the army guys. Take them back to the crater. All three of them. Okay. Uh, they would probably say it's like, all right, well, we need three of us at least yeah. to do that. How many people you want? Okay, just three? Uh, I'm a deuce. And would you would you want anybody to, anybody else to guard him as yeah, well? Yeah, I was going to say I'm, I'm going to do uh, three for each person or nine. Cool. So that brings you down to uh, 14, I believe, um, that are still with you in particular. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, nine of them will start kind of going off and, like, escorting them and, like, trying to gently guide them. Uh, back the way you came. Perfect. Uh, then I'm gonna um, just say, alright, let's find this blaster pistol. Uh, maybe there's some type of way you can see if he has a map in his data pad or something. So we can give direct uh, directions to the, the control room team. Do we think there's gonna be anything on the data pad or am I better off just looking at the desk itself? Uh, I would say R5, based on your previous investigation checks of the desk, you don't think there's anything else to be found in the desk itself. Okay. <laughs> no. Two, na- two natural, two two natural ones that are a total of eight. Um, yeah. Maybe if you came back <laughs> another right. day and checked again, but at this point, it just wouldn't make sense to you to keep. That it. that ship has sailed. All right. Uh, so I'll try to go over and see what I can find on the data pad. All right. Give me a technology check. Okay, that's a 27. <laughs> a 27, very nice. Um, so you are able to pull up a pretty rough outline of the overall layout of the base further towards once you actually get to sector uh, 251 that the droids were approaching from. Um, you see that it's labeled as having a armory over there, and you see that there is a control room over on that side. Okay. So The control room in particular is on the inner side of the ring, and the armory is on the outer side. So there's a control room over by where the droids were trying to put up a front line, but that's probably heading back towards us as we speak. Couldn't find anything about that pistol, though. I still have no idea about that. But that said, um, R5, while you were kind of waiting around and they were doing everything, um, you probably would have started to kind of glance around the room a bit. Um, Give me a perception check, please. Okay. That's a, well, it's technically a 19, but on the dice, that's a 20. <laughs> Indeed, it's a 19, but it's significantly better than your previous looking around rolls. And um, what do we call it when it's a 20 on the die, Jack? It's a natural 20, but it, again, due to modifiers, it is 19. <clears throat> Indeed, because it's an ability check and not an attack roll. <laughs> so, but fortunately, you are able to see that there is a secret panel on um, one side. Uh, specifically, it's the side going back towards sector 253 where you came from. But you can see that there's like a little keypad that you would need to punch in a password to. But yeah, you would figure that based on the guard who has since been marked um, had said that like it, he keeps some fancy stuff there, you'd figure that would be the, the way to get to it. All right, so all, we, all that's separating us from the blaster is one little password. What's so um, what's so special about the blaster that we're looking for? Well, uh, I don't sentimental value. I don't know. Someone else is looking for it. Draw Draw oh. made a deal with Fine. somebody to get this blast pistol. Yeah. All right, it's uh, enough for me. Is there a way you um, can cut through that? So what am I supposed? To... I sir, I certainly can. Um, so wait, what is it? A wall? It's a wall or a door? It's a it's like a panel in the panel in the wall or in the desk. <clears throat> the wall. Again, you're done with the desk. Oh. R5's mind yep. is completely moved beyond the desk in any capacity. So th- this is on the wall. Just okay. All Actually, right. then I will. Yes. <laughs> then I will start uh, for the third time. I will start cutting uh, a hole into the um, into the panel, into the wall panel. Okay, you put your lightsaber to it, and your lightsaber does not penetrate into where the panel is. Oh. Sorry, mates, no dice. Oh, we're actually going to have to figure this they out. Didn't, they didn't want this found. Um, can I examine the panel? Can I get a closer look at it? 
Sure. Uh, you go and you look at it. It's like a little keypad um, where you can punch in a combination. I'm sorry. We're not going to brute force this one. Um, can I check for anything on the data pad that might indicate what the password is? Yeah, you can see that it says uh, that actually Fablo was very diligent and um, sent out multiple memos to all of uh, the people that worked for him saying, hey, don't save your passwords on things. Memorize them. That's the point of it being a secure password. Ah, oh, God, he has better operational security than most workplaces. Damn it. Um, while this is all happening, I'm going to call Umbrin and tell him to just... Hey, Umbrin, uh, don't worry about the control panel, the control room. I think it's a, it's a horrible idea. Just come back. No, but I, I think we found it. No, you didn't. It's all the way on the other side. Just come back. No, I definitely found it. Bryn, come back. I imagine he's just, he's literally just looking at like one of the Scomplic ports and he's like, yeah, this is it. It's gotta be it. Yeah, once we're at the point where we're cutting over to you guys, you'll have basically made it too. <laughs> you, by this point, you would have made it there if you were to continue directly down there and you're like, uh, uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I actually made it to the, the control room. We'll get. Oh, well, I'll explain what was on the way in case if you want to derail it. But I just wanted to get through this room first. I just want to derail it. <laughs> okay, here actually. Um, I, I can't read your disappointment anymore. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. Um, okay, <laughs> so one last check for this room. Um, unless if the people in Fabla's office have anything particularly in mind to do, um, I would say, Alo, you were the last one checking the keypad. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. Uh, yeah, 12. Uh, got nothing. They... 12, you are not able to ascertain like what the password would be. Um, mm -hmm. You would figure with a 12 that somebody could probably break their way into through the keypad if they had the proper skills, but not really something that would be your area of expertise. Would a security kit or a slicer's kit count? I will allow one security kit check. Uh, it's going to be a very high DC, so go ahead and give me a security kit check. Alright. Uh, yeah, fair warning. This might need to... Uh, this might need a fate I'm, point. I'm stepping back. Also, <laughs> probably wise. Uh, Vote of confidence. Mm -hmm. Dirty 20. You good with that? That's not terrible. Wow. Okay. If I if I use a fade point, do I have to replace the 20 with that, or is it just the highest roll? You replace the 20 with that. If you want to go and roll an advantage, oh, you have to call the fade point before the roll. If you use the fade point before the roll, then it's at advantage. After the roll, you're just taking whatever the next one is. Nope, you know what? I'll just take the 20. Got out. You can feel that it's starting to give. Um, there's a few mechanical things that start clicking. Oh. Like one, two, three. And then you feel the entire system jam up um, in front of your security kit. And it you can feel that it is locked um, still and that you were not able to make it through. Nope. Oh, oh that could have gotten worse. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, he is somebody who very much treasures his treasures and hides them behind very hard locks. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump over to um, the people heading towards the comms room. You continue floating down the hallway away from Pablo's office as you go. And uh, while well lit, um, again, it seems eerily empty um, and strangely quiet as you proceed through until you get to uh, what is labeled as the mess hall. Um, and you can see that there was a normal door here before, and now it has clearly been barricaded and um, fully kind of sealed off from the inside of the actual mess hall itself. Is it just a solid door? Uh, it looks like kind of a mash of various solid pieces of metal that have been like quickly welded together um, and uh, stuff like that that kind of has replaced the door. And it does not seem to be meant to be opened from your side. Can it be opened from the other side, do we think? Uh, give me an investigation check. Would you like I'm a temporary be... boost? You know what? I would like that. Okay. You get to add a 1d6. That I am at a 16. Yeah, 16. Um, 
you figure that probably the like the weld points to the wall um, are way more easily accessible from that side and that um, provided that who what is on the other side thought ahead and brought in the tools they needed they'd be able to cut their way out pretty easily uh, keep it how, how long would it take for you to rig up like a bomb that would explode if somebody opened it from that side would that take a while uh I assume, Dave, that would, in fact, take a while. Um, give me a demolitions kit check just to see um, how long you okay. figure. And also there's the question of how big of an explosion you want it to be, obviously. But 13, uh, you figure if you, had all the, if you had all the equipment you needed, you could probably do it in 10 minutes or so. Yeah, it, uh, it'd take a little while. Not uh, just something you whip up. All right. Well, we don't have time for that. All right. Can I listen to the door and see if I can hear? Yeah. Give me a perception. Any living souls on the other side? All right. Natural one. So four and eight. Total of eight. If it's worth um, anything. Total of eight. So uh, you try to press your ear up to it. Um, sounds like the material is just thick enough that you're not really sure. Um, what's on the other side. You know it can be broken in, but no sound is traveling through that you're able to pick up on. All right, we gotta keep an eye on this. How deep into our travels is this? Is uh, it gonna cut us off from- You figure uh, that the, um, it will definitely be between, if you continue further, it'll be between you and the rest of the group. You figure by this point, this hall will lead you to the far end um, to exit out of Fabla's base, if you take it all the way. Towards the, uh, the sector the droids uh, abandoned? Yes. Uh, so how long would it take them to like weld or cut their way out? If they wanted to leave, if whoever's on the other side wanted to leave, they could probably do it in a matter of minutes. I point at a smattering of of the fifteen men that I have, men, men or women that I have, and I say, keep an eye on this door. If they start cutting their way out, make a whole lot of noise. But until then, stay quiet. All right. Is a how much is a smattering? Like five. I'm going to leave four there. I'm going to leave four there, make sure they're all armed, which I'm sure ever, we didn't, they didn't come unarmed to this fight, but you know, oh, yeah, just make sure. Uh, do any of them have grenades? Uh, none of them I don't have are, any grenades to give them. them. Equipped with grenades. I look at the other ten, and like, if any of you have a grenade, they all you know, just look and hand shrug. it over. They all kind of just look and shrug. Kiba looks right, down at his bandolier with like half a dozen grenades in it. <laughs> and he just looks at you and doesn't say anything. <clears throat> well, I figured those were all spoken for. I, I, you seem like the guy that has a name etched on each and every one of those grenades. Ah, meets on no mind if you take one. I'm just, it, it, you know, confined area sort of thing. If they cut a single hole in there, we can chuck a grenade. These guys can, can chuck a grenade and it would be far more effective than than just blaster fire. Yeah, good idea. Misa assumed that uh, Harry reimburse Misa for all this anyway, so whatever. He is a rich man, that Harry Johnson in you, but Just give him hell. Remember what Harry said. And I don't remember what Harry said, but I just try to inspire them by saying, remember what Harry said. They look like they're still, they've still got some good fire, even though they've kind of settled a bit um, from earlier, just given the given the shift in pace between the all-out assault to the eerily quiet hallways that you've all been traveling through now for a bit. You'd be good to go? Uh. All right, let's 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 head on down to whatever the uh, comms room is it, or is it the, the control room? Or are they just the same thing? Misa assume they're the same. All right, we're going to keep looking for that. You continue on for another couple minutes, um, and eventually you do come to one room that is on the uh, inner circle side of it um, from where you are, and uh, you do see it says um, control room, kind of labeled above it, and right as you approach and are standing outside looking at the door, you hear Harry's voice come over the comm link saying um, to forget, um, you know, come going for, the, going for the control room, come back. Harry, are you sure, like, we can counter hack the counter hacker and make sure that dread has something to do you know while he's in the egg 
make sure our Eggman has something to do. I mean, I didn't know you you found the control room. But I mean, this is definitely the control tell room. Tell you this much: the armory is not too far from there. Yes, be careful. Well, how many arms are in the armory? Um, that's a good question. Let me get back to you. All right. Well, there's, there's okay. Real last question though, for real. Like, there's a person in here. You're calling this football game. Uh, I don't know. There, there's sports. <laughs> there's got to be sports in Star Wars. I don't know any of the sports. There you're are, calling this a sports game. There are tons of sports. <laughs> you're, you're calling this sports ball game. Uh, there you go. Do we? Uh, do do we? Do we kill the anybody that's in there? Or do we, we capture them? What? What? I what, mean, what, what do I we guess do get information, first. and if he seems to be out of information, you can do whatever you want. Trying to be not as evil as I was before. I guess I won't kill him. Or you can kill him. Remember, no witnesses. I just, you know, I have all sorts of deniability if I'm ordered to do something. Yeah. That's how it works, right? If you're ordered to do something terrible, okay. you gotta do it. I order you to murder do. him. Uh, okay, so we're gonna murder him after we find out. Uh, what information do you need? Draw, do you need any information? Red here again. What's party line? I don't know why you keep calling this draw guy. You clearly dialing into my frequency. I would like the counter slicer dealt with. I got everything else I need here. I mean, how do you find a counter slicer? What draws more power? I don't. You're saying you like more specific directions? Yes, because I have no idea what to do with the. If we can trace him anywhere onto the sector, that'd be ideal. I haven't found anything in the office yet. Well, I'm at the control room. He's probably listening to this phone call right now. Anyways. Dealt with. Got it. Click. Love you. Bye. Love Click. Love you. I can't believe I'm showed up to the siege drunk. Red just looks at his own finger for a second and realizes there's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you're at this door now. All right. um, what do you want to do with it? Um... Well, you know how in AD&D you had like porters that would just like check all the doors to make sure that that you didn't die? Yeah. Uh, no. I'm going to take some of these 10, ten guys. Uh, just lem just, lemmings yeah. them all the way through the doors. I'll take the hardiest looking one. Uh, by which I mean, you know, the one that looks like it, it could take like a little shock or something. They could they could handle at least floor one of uh, Macaulay Culkin's <laughs> house in Home Alone. Okay. That's the guy I'm looking for. I want. I want that guy. Okay. There's I one that to the one of them seems burlier than the others. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> All right. Now remember what Harry said. Get her done. That's a twenty-six. Uh. Oh. Okay. Sure. I guess. I guess so. Okay. Uh, and you see this kind of big lumbering person just like kind of like kind of waddle their way through space as they float over. Just kind of wriggling a little bit, and um, <laughs> waddling your way what through. What would waddling space? even do in zero? I'll leave shit. that up to you to figure out what that looks I like. I don't want um, to. No. Well, then you don't have to. That's the beauty of the imagination. Um, so <laughs> he gets to the door, um, and as soon as he puts his hand on it, he just gets shocked, and immediately you can see the life leave his eyes, and yeah, he's very dead. Mark and Snow. All right, so uh, that's one more down. All right, so I got nine guys left. Okay, um, what's the next most uh, hardy looking? Technically, fellow? you have fourteen left. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I left four of them. No, I. So you had sorry, you had fifteen. Uh, yeah, you had I had 10 eleven left with you. Yeah. Uh, there's the next. I look at the rest. There's the next heftiest looking one. Um, you can see the looks on all their faces as they're just like not. I, 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 they're I, not I, amused. I, I, <laughs> I like the next heftiest one. You're in luck. We have a universal key right here. Kiba Kiba, you got anything that blasts this door open? M Misa not one of the door opener people. Misa got grenades. No, 
Yeah, no, no, don't, don't touch the door. That's obviously bad. And I push the floating, like, chubby corpse away. <laughs> That's obviously bad. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I just, we just need a bomb, and then, you know, you don't have to push the button. Misa made bomb. Little robot took it away. Screwed it up somehow. Remember that? Because I do. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I really remember. That was terrible. I, I hated that every second of it. Maybe we could have him. Maybe by some chance that bomb is outside of this room. <laughs> and therefore, <laughs> we can make use of it finally. Uh, Harry, uh, this is Umbert again. Um, is it time to go boom boom on that big bomb? I mean... Oh? You sure? I'm to go boom boom so bad on that. I thought we were supposed to, you know, well, lead everybody we... back there and then go boom boom and have them suck into space. Well, I mean, we lost Porkins trying to break through this door. We just need a bomb to blow it up, and uh, that's the <laughs> most most complete bomb that we have. So you want to take the bomb from outside, bring it inside to you, and then you go boom boom? No, I just want to hope that it's on the right room. <laughs> okay, that's probably bad hope. All right, let's, um... Do you have any ideas of how to open this door? Because we don't we don't have a guy that opens uh, doors here. Our door Who opener door died. Open? Orkins, I think was his you name. His name was Kyle! <laughs> Kyle Porkins died. It wasn't his name, you bastard man! You sacrificed my friend he... for nothing! Gosh. I can hear all that through the comm. What's wrong with you? Get it together, soldier. Get it together. Also oh, on the comms. Umbrid is a bastard man! Ask? I mean, ask, ask Drawd if he can, I don't know, get rid of the power from there. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll contact W Dread. W Dread, can, can you unlock this door? I can certainly try, and I will try to unlock the door. Yeah, slice his kit check. That's gonna be a 20. Alright, <clears throat> roll me dirty. a 20, please. Just a little dirty, just a, a hair on the dirty side. Nope. That's a one. <clears throat> yeah, you get another zap coming back your way, unfortunately, on that one. Deck save a seven. Yep. Uh, fortunately, it was a nice low roll for that one. Um, so you only take one point of uh, lightning damage that comes zapping back. Ooh. So it's actually reduced it to him. nothing because of your armor. So you actually don't take any. But you oh, do feel right. the zap kind of. You feel the zap kind of arc around you, but none of it actually deals damage. This could be a good time to jump over to um, Dread with your plan. Are you still planning oh. on trying to just overwhelm it so that way all the power shuts down in the area? I would like to try to specifically overload everything in the control room only. Okay. Uh, yeah, go I'd ahead like just and that would be flood nice. everything with power, not data, power. Okay, give me a slicer's kit check then, because you're still trying to mess with their system and redirect things around. All right, I'm gonna use myself a fate point. Okay. Is there a limit yeah. on the amount of power that you wanna use, or is it unlimited? 23. I believe he said unlimited, to be specific. 23, all right, roll me a D, roll me two D20s, please. Hey. Oh my God. Lowest is a three. Highest <laughs> is also a three. It's a three. It's three. How do we around. get two <laughs> natural ones in one night? <laughs> we got way more than two. Doubles happen. No, yeah, but like two. at the same, for the same roll. Unfortunately, um, unfortunately, that's not quite enough. You can sense that you got really close to uh, be able to send just enough power, but your nemesis on the other end um, has been able to uh, redirect it just at the last second and the power kind of just dissipates out throughout the system again. I want to send him a message. What would you like to say? You like to play games, I like to play games, and for games is over. I'll stop messing with your systems if you give yourself up. If you don't, I shut off life support. Give me an intimidation check. 19. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. All right. So you get a message in reply, um, and it just says, um, call off your goons, and I'll leave peacefully. What? He says, back up. He's leaving. Was that to me? 
Yes. All right. I will back up. Say, it's okay to come out. We're backed up. There is nothing we can do from a ranged distance. Dread, you receive a message that says, your idiot friends think they're funny. Tell them all the way. Boone, you can see you guys. You need to get further back. He means all the way. He wants a clear shot. So, it's a long hallway. I, I don't know how much further I can go back, but I, I, I'll get out the way, you know. Just regroup with the others, all right? Yeah, it's fine. All right. I will go regroup. We'll we'll head back towards the uh, the mess hall area and group group with our four right. uh, wayward allies. All right, and uh, so Kiba, you're going too, I assume. Yes, correct. All right, so uh, this section of the group uh, departs. Um, none of you see the door open or close at any point, but um, yeah, uh, Dread, you don't receive any further messages um, after that. All right. So. Last thing, is there anything else that you wanted to do from the central power station uh, for tonight? Can I check to see if I can take away life support from specific ro like rooms? Uh, you would know at this point that um, you've kind of scanned around their system enough that there isn't, you wouldn't have that fine of a level of control, um, unfortunately. It's a little too specific right. for how the system was built. I try to slice the turrets get command of them you yeah. can see clearly that there is a set of turrets on in either direction um for the uh um for the base uh so go ahead and give me a slicer's kit check dirty 20 nice um so you are easily able to overwhelm the um ones uh that are pointed in the direction that you came from but the ones that are pointed in the direction that um, you guys uh, sent the droids to have some pretty recent, um, pretty recent changes in the change dialogue. And uh, you see at the end of it, um, just the kind of somebody, it's like whoever did it left a little, a little bit of initials. Um, and you just see the letter, like the letters WB um, uh, at the end of the little chain log. Um, and you can, or change log, and you can see that it has been set up to specifically attack at Fablo's troops on that side at this point. Good nose game. And I will do the same thing to the turrets in the other direction, if I can. Uh, so yeah, you are able to do so. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and jump back over to everybody else as they regroup. Um, are you regrouping back at Fablo's office in particular? I mean, we'll grab our guys from the mess hall. Uh, and meet at wherever the junction near the office is. You know, the office is not quite the hallway big outside enough. Or... Okay, yeah, so you guys yeah. are able to meet at the hallway outside. Um, and then after a, uh, like, you, you all regroup, and then just as you get back there, one of the small little kind of closet-looking doors um, just slides open, and you see a vent hanging down. Um, hanging loose, and Roos drops down through the vent. I'm just it's like, and he's just like, all right. I know where they are. They're in the mess hall. Where'd he come from? <laughs> Turns and points back at the vent. Um, if we can get in there, we can take him out. Pablo's behind a lot of guys. I was able to find, follow kind of through some of their systems, but we'd have to find the way into his little panic room in the back. But I at least know the way. And there you have another thrilling session of Starships and Scoundrels. Remember to subscribe and tune back in next week to see what else may happen to the crew of the Mayday. Um, if you don't want to wait quite that long, go ahead and check out the channel because we have tons of other videos about RPGs, board games, video games, movies, pretty much everything nerdy under the sun. Thanks as always for watching and may the force be with you. Did anybody else see that vent open? I totally Kinda didn't. sus. Uh, hey, uh, Roos vented. That's all I'm saying. I can't see anything. He vented. I, I don't Bruce know why you're vented. All doing he vented. That. Bruce vented. No. He vented. He's oh, God. <laughs> I mean, Boston's whole time. Bruce is kind of <laughs> sus. <laughs>